some adults don't develop acne until adulthood. Yeah, actually, I always tell them uh, number one is genetic. But I always joking tell them uh, don't blame your parents. In Malaysia, there's, we, are, we are the first one to have this uh, new fractional radio frequency. It's the first in Malaysia. Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Peter Cheng. I'm a consultant dermatologist and I'm the founder of Peter Cheng Clinic. Uh, we have two branches. One is in Lanigas, Kuala Lumpur, and the other one is in Desa Park City. Hi, I'm Dr. Lu. I'm an aesthetic physician. I'm Dr. Peter Swai. Hi, I'm Dr. Chai. I'm a consultant aesthetic physician. So being a beauty lover, I started my aesthetic journey in 2010. How common do we see acne patients in our clinic? Every day. Every day, right? We see it every day and I think it's about maybe 30% of the bulk of our patients at least at least 30 percent right yeah um at least the most common condition in the world so uh, especially amongst teenagers and young adults so the common myth is um acne only happens in teenagers mm. so many adults continue to um to have acne have right? acne yeah. uh, into their 30s 40s yeah. and some adults don't develop acne until adulthood yeah in fact there's statistics that show that 60 percent you know of the acne patients continue to have acne into the adult food. And I always tell the patient, you know, um, the most important thing uh, why we treat acne is to prevent scars. You know, because it's harder to treat the scars than to treat the acne. Yeah, I agree totally because the most effective treatment to treat scars is to prevent it in the first place. Yeah, yeah. And so for me, I think uh, a lot of uh, friends, relatives always ask me about acne. So I think that's a very, very common thing that our friends and relatives want to know and want to treat. Perfect. And and the causes of acne, actually I always tell them, you know, number one is genetic. But I always jokingly tell them, like, don't blame your parents because it's not necessary, you know. It can always start from, from you yourself. And then we also have, uh, because of hormone, that's why it's common in Mountain teenagers, right? Hormonal changes. And the hormone can be due to either stress Again, stress are divided into whether psychological stress from exams, you know, teenagers, they have exams and uh, also uh, working stress for adults and then physical stress. Sleep is so important. I find that a lot of uh, teenagers nowadays lack of sleep. And also, if I get fever, if I travel, you know, nowadays, if we travel overseas, Europe, when we come back, you know, change in time zone and everything, our acne will pop up. Yeah. For teenagers also, for guys, I find that you know, they, they go on protein shake, protein powder to build muscles. And that's another cause of acne. And we have uh, like those muscle building supplements mm. which really contains those androgenic steroids mm. which will lead to the development of acne. Yeah, yeah. Last time it used to be called Trem, and there's one ingredient it's called Trembolon. You know, and that's why it's called Trend Acne also. But nowadays they have so many chemicals there, you know, they, they won't put Trembolon inside anymore. They may put another different kind of steroid inside there. Mm. There's another one condition, PCOS. Uh, uh, which yeah. always come with acne as well. Yeah. So in a doubt. Yeah, correct. So PCOS, we, we will be suspicious of a person who has polycystic ovarian syndrome. Whenever the patient has hirsutism, whenever there's irregular menses. Obesity, common, but it's not compulsory. Right? So when you have all these criteria, then you will suspect that the patient has PCOS. But the treatment will still be almost the same like how we normally treat acne. Except that, you know, I always uh, refer to my gynec colleague as well. Because, and especially obese patient, we may start some medication, for example, metformin. And uh, obese patient, we'll, we'll advise them on lifestyle changes as well. I think environmental also plays a role. Oily and sweaty environment yeah. can cause acne and some conditions where polycarditis can develop mm -hmm. in the area with oil glands like our back, chest, and also on the neck. Yeah. COVID time? Uh, uh, not to forget, for products-wise, we right. uh, advise to use non comedogenic products which doesn't block your pores. Uh, yeah, and makeups. You know, but I always, I didn't tell my patient, you know, it's, I, I gave up on advising not to put on makeups. It will fail for sure, right? I tell my patients, just quickly remove it if you don't need the makeup. Mm -hmm. I also advise my patient, if you use makeup, make sure you double cleanse mm -hmm. and try to choose um, less oily ingredients. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, what about treatment? How, how, how do you all treat? Yeah, I normally advise patients to start with the... Depends on severity actually, whether it's mild, moderate or severe. If mild, we always start with topical treatment. Eye cream, 
you can always use like um, product contains salicylic acid and then retinoid and then also uh, they need a good sun protection as well non tomatogenic sun protection cool. uh, so to me um, uh, it's important to manage acne because but that's to avoid this potential scarring and also to minimize the psychological impact that it can have. Because um, do you agree that um, our skin health is all entwined with our mental health? So having acne can predispose us to all kinds of psychologi psychological challenges such as anxiety, depression, social avoidance. And besides, it's a whole new world out there. You know, the pressure from the selfie culture plus the social media cannot be underestimated. So and keep in mind that it might be challenging for your teenagers to open up to you in the first place. So if they do, um, listen to them intently, support their requests by, and take action together. Yeah, so for moderate, usually we want to start the treatment even more aggressively. Mm. Uh, for moderate and severe, we want to start oral treatment like antibiotic, like isotretinoin, correct? Yes, mm. besides some um, topical treatments like you mentioned and um, oral medications, so um, effective tre acne treatment usually combines the different modalities. So there are some in-clinic treatments that um, we can recommend to our patients. For example, extraction is where we using a needle to create an exit point and push out the content in one direction. So we, um, don't pop or squeeze your acne because it can squeeze the inflammation bones up and down and it will lead to the increase in the size and the depth of the acne and so is the risk of the scarring. Yeah. yeah. So and if it's uh, not used cystic, then we may need to inject for example trimcinolol, you know, into it, a diluted trimcinolol into it to reduce those inflammation. Mm. Yeah. Like they mentioned certain treatments uh, like to re remove the dead skin, you know, to reduce down the oiliness of skin, but we also need to hydrate. Certain light treatment may help as well, like uh, low level light therapy and also certain energy based devices like lasers. Also using uh, radio frequency, uh, for example, micro needling radio frequency that we can also help to reduce acne and at the same time treat the scarring as well. Right? Because we always say, you know, to clear acne is not difficult. You know, we can always clear acne, the induction phase. But we also want to maintain, we also want to prevent the acne from coming back again. Right? So that is when that is when it's more difficult how to maintain the acne, prevent the acne from coming back. So things like we can continue on doing the treatment, microdermabrasion, put a patient on light treatment, and also the topical treatment then becomes even more important during the maintenance phase. Um, uh, so different time we use uh, different different methods. You know? And so another thing that we can talk about is also scar treatment, right? So scar treatment, we can use, uh, I would say that the most effective, the gold standard treatment for scar is definitely using lasers or energy-based devices. Topical treatment like topical retinoids has a little bit of role in acne scars, uh, but it's you won't expect drastic changes. And I always tell patients also scars are scars. I cannot expect it please cannot expect hundred percent improvement of scars. But you know, just now the patient like, before we started this thing, she she when I told her, you know, it was a we were consulting about scar treatment and I told her about the sixty percent improvement. Then she told me, uh, no doctor you're, you're just being humble, you know, she said. The last time I brought my daughter here, you said you need six months to treat her condition and then within a month her condition improved already. So uh, I'm sure you, you, uh, you, you're just being humble and, and give us uh, underestimate the thing, you know. I said, yeah, it, it is good to, I, I don't like to overpromise my patient. If you get the results more than what we uh, expect, then everyone will be happy. How about the feel of patient, the feel of medication? What do you want to do? Mm. Have you ever come yeah. across a patient with feels like hormone treatment? Correct. Isotretin. Yeah. So definitely, every patient uh, should the the treatment should be individualized to the patient. There will be patients that come to us. Uh, they're so afraid of taking tablets, and there are patients that come to us, uh, pregnant ladies who come to us with acne. So the treatment will need to be changed. Uh, and of course, uh, teenagers that come with parents. So at the same time. We, we don't only treat the teenagers, but we also need to treat the parents. <laughs> we also need to consult. Uh, because I always say, if something that you're not comfortable with, it's never going to work. So we must make sure that you know after the consultation, everyone is comfortable with the plan, and then it will be a successful plan. Mm. So just now, we talk about fractional radio frequency. Actually, uh, in Malaysia, this, we, are, we are the first one to have this uh, new fractional radio frequency. It's the first in Malaysia 
to have this fractional radio frequency device is called Morpheus 8. And the advantage of Morpheus 8 is that it is able to go to the depths of 4mm. And what is radio frequency actually? Radio frequency is something that we use every day. Your 4G line, your 5G line, you know. You go through RFID, you know, in tow, those are using radio frequency. But in this case, the devices uses the radio frequency to generate heat at the tip of the micro needle. So when it generates heat, we know that by, by heating it up, by causing a bit of micro trauma, you are able to generate new collagen. You are able to remodel the skin and when you go deeper into the fat, you can also remodel the fat. So it can be used to treat the jowl fat. You know, some, as we age, we start to have more nasolabial fold, uh, the fold over here, the fat starts to sag down. So we target those fat to reduce down the, the fat so that those folds become less obvious. And by stimulating collagen, you also tighten your skin. Right? And uh, it is useful to treat scars, whatever scars, especially acne scars and also for skin tightening and by reducing down the sebaceous gland uh, we also may improve the acne <laughs> fractional technology has been there for more than 20 years really but what is the advantage of fractional technology is because there are areas where there is no trauma to it so that means normal skin in between the treatment sites so when those you have normal skin it heals better it heals faster so very low downtime because within a week all the tiny scabs will peel off and because there's micro needle we can also deliver uh, things that we want to deliver into the skin for example we can also draw the patient's blood spin it take a growth factor it's called tyler rich plasma mm -hmm. and apply on it immediately after the treatment oh, 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 and it's also ideal for those patients who want to incorporate um this like, exosomes mm. into their Correct. enhanced skin regeneration Correct. Like, growth factors everything yeah. how about complication is there any complication for dark color skin we have a lot of dark colors mm. patient you know, morpheus said that's correct, correct. Of so uh, radio frequency is one of the safest uh in fact some people call it color blind you know that means it's safe for even darker skin patients as compared to a certain lasers where we have to be really careful in darker skin patients so for radio frequency devices the advantage is always um, you can use it for darker skin patients and also supposedly the, the pain is less compared to lasers but of course you need to compare with depending on what kind of lasers we are comparing to or comparing to ultrasound devices so we need a numb cream la. and then, yeah you need topical numbing cream before the procedure okay so thank you dr lu thank you dr chai for your insights and uh so for for those of you who have acne or acne scars uh, please consult your dermatologist uh, to seek treatment early <laughs>